Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the radar interceptor observers of the United States Air Force. plane carrying one atom bomb and dropping it on a fairly large American city would destroy that city and almost all of its inhabitants. Every American plane that takes to the air, whether military or civilian, its point of departure, its destination, its time of departure and estimated time of arrival is known. Enemy planes, planes of unfriendly nations, will undoubtedly not notify us of their coming. Therefore, any unidentified aircraft flying toward this country from abroad may be the enemy, poised to strike, poised to destroy. Unidentified aircraft may be American planes off course, lost or in trouble. Intercepting all these unidentified aircraft before they reach our coastline to make sure that they're ours and not the enemy's is one of the jobs of the United States Air Force's fighter interceptor squadrons. In recognition of the valuable and crucial job that these squadrons perform, proudly we hail the 58th Fighter Interceptor Squadron, Otis Air Force Base, Falmouth, Massachusetts. They are one of our first lines of defense against atomic attack. Our first attack curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, ask any jet pilot. He'll tell you, jet flying is one of the most thrilling experiences in the world. And modern jets are not only fast, they're safe and easy to fly too. And now you can get in on this jet age as an Air Force aviation cadet. If you're between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single and a high school graduate, you may qualify. If you do, you'll receive 18 months of all-round jet training, the best in the world. It's rugged, intensive work. But if the training's hard, the rewards are worth it. You graduate as an Air Force lieutenant earning more than $5,000 a year with an unlimited future before you because you're a highly skilled professional, fully equipped for leadership in military and civilian aviation. Yes, indeed, be an aviation cadet. Visit your nearest Air Force recruiting station for full details. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, A Scramble for Lancer Red. <laughs> Hi there, Lieutenant. My name's Cross, Homer Cross. I'm looking for Lieutenant Robert Eddy. Well, look no further. You found him. Well, then I guess you found your new radar observer, Lieutenant. I'm glad to meet you. Mind if I call you by your first name? No, not at all, Bob. I hear you're just fresh out of crew training at Moody Air Force Base. Yeah, that's right. I was kind of hoping to be sent overseas, but no, they sent me here to Otis. Well, you see, if you hadn't been available as a replacement, my former radar officer wouldn't have been free to go over. I still wish I'd have been sent over instead. I want to do something important. That's why I joined the Air Force. Well, I got news for you, Homer. You'll be doing a darned important job right here at Otis. We're kind of proud of our outfit and, and the work we're doing. The 58th Fighter Interceptor Squadron has got quite a rep down at Moody. Well, you see, we have to have. It's up to us to see that this country isn't bombed in a sneak attack. These days, with the atomic bomb, a sneak attack could kill a lot of people. Yeah, but the chances are pretty slim. Homer, we're on alert 24 hours a day for a full week every other week. We've had plenty of scrambles since we were set up here. And all duds. Fortunately, Homer, fortunately. Let's hope it's never an enemy plane heading for us. Incidentally, as you probably know, we go on alert this coming Monday. The 437th across the field there is on alert this week. The CO told me last night when I arrived. But even when we're not on alert, there's plenty to do. 
We have classes almost every day and practice runs. You know, it keeps us on our toes. By the way, this is the hot room, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's what we call it. Why? I was just thinking that it's kind of cold. Being a southern boy, this cold weather you have here is liable to kill me. Well, we're lucky, Homer. We're on alert next week from 12 to 1,800 hours in Group D. The days are pretty warm. It really gets cold here on the Cape at night. Now, take today, for example. What about today? Well, as I said, it's... it's warm. Warm? Have you looked at that thermometer outside? No. What does it say? Fifteen degrees. Man, oh, man. Well, now, there, what did I tell you, Homer? Warm as toast. <sighs> well, that was quite a dinner, wife. Wife? See here, Robert Eddie, that kind of talk went out a hundred years ago. Well, I'm all for going back to them good old days. That's when men were men. None of this equality stuff. If I didn't know you were kidding, I'd hit you over the head with the rest of that leg of lamb. Well, and I'm glad you know I'm kidding. That lamb's too good to waste. <laughs> you know, that's one of the reasons I love you so much. Hmm? What is? The fact that after three years of marriage, you still remember to tell me that you like my cooking. Or a new dress or the new way I fix my hair. It tells me that you still kind of think of me once in a while. I think of you lots. Because I love you lots. Oh, darling. Um, tell me, Lieutenant, how did things go at the field today? Well, just fine, Mrs. Lieutenant. I got to meet my new radar officer. Oh, what's he like? Hmm? Seems like a nice kid. <laughs> Listen to the old man. And how old would you say this kid is? Well, 23. Oh, I see. And from the lofty old age of 27 going on 28, he looks like a kid. <laughs> what's his name? Cross, Homer Cross. He is from the South, madam, and has an accent you could slice <laughs> with a knife. He married? No, very single. Is he happy about his new assignment? Well, he's just up from Moody, still wet behind the ears, and he's got the idea that the only guys who are doing anything important in this Air Force are overseas. But I think a couple of weeks here will show him otherwise. Maybe if he met a nice girl. Oh, now see here, Mrs. Fixit. Maybe it'd be better if we left him to pick out a girl by himself. Oh, no, Bob. Now, why don't you invite Homer for dinner, say, night after tomorrow? And I'll invite that cute Nancy Waters from down the street. Oh, Nancy, huh? Well, she is just about the cutest girl here in Falmouth. Might be a good idea at that. <laughs> say, how old is she, by the way? Mm, 20, I think. Just right for a kid of 23. All right, I'll do it. Bully for you. And I hope she makes him happy. If there's one thing the pilot of an F-94 wants, it's a man in the rear cockpit who's completely happy with his job and his surroundings. <laughs> now, seriously, though, honey, you know, once you get off the ground, you're a team. And a team only works at its best when both men in it are enjoying everything about what they're doing. Are you happy, Lieutenant? Why, of course I am, wife. But then I'm lucky. In addition to the 58th, I've got you... Remember, the formula for computing ground speed is distance traveled over time in minutes equals ground speed per hour over 60 minutes. And that's all for today, gentlemen. See you tomorrow. Say, Homer, hold on a second. Oh, sure thing, Bob. Uh, you free tomorrow night? <laughs> oh, as a bird. Well, the wife and I would like it if you'd come to dinner. I'll drive you over after we're through here. Oh, that's real friendly of you, Bob. Incidentally, she's inviting a pretty gal from down the block to meet you. Her name's Nancy Waters. Nancy Waters. Yeah, it's a pretty name. I sure would like to meet a pretty gal up here since I'm going to be here for quite a while. Oh, she's pretty, all right. Well, if she's as pretty as her name, I'm sure she'll be just fine. Where's Allie and Bob? In the kitchen, I guess, putting on the finishing touches. Let's not talk about them. Homer Cross. I've never known a boy by the name of Homer before. My mother thought the Greeks were the greatest. When I was born, my father wanted to call me Robert E. <laughs> but he didn't have a chance. Mother wanted Homer, and Homer it was. Well, there's nothing wrong with Robert E., of course. But, well, I think Homer is much more interesting. How old are you? 
23. Oh, that's perfect. What's perfect? Oh, um, 23. Oh, that is, I mean, well, that's a perfect age to be a lieutenant in the Air Force. Yeah, I see. You know, you're very nice. Am I? Would you go out with me if I was to ask you? Well, that's putting a girl in a funny position. Why don't you ask first and see? All right. Miss Waters, will you do me the honor of letting me take you to the movies this coming Monday evening? It'll be my pleasure, Lieutenant Cross. Say there, you two. Dinner's ready. May I take you into dinner, Miss Waters? You may, Lieutenant Cross. Golly, you know, I'd forgotten I was hungry. I guess I got so wrapped up in, well, in events of local interest that I didn't remember I even had a stomach. <laughs> Here you are, Homer, your first time on duty in the alert room. It's a nice, brisk Monday in January. It's cold and windy, and even the dogs aren't going out. Oh, it's more than brisk for this southern boy. It's cold. <laughs> You've met all the other guys in group, haven't you? No, sure thing. I met them all last week. A swell bunch. That they are. <laughs> Looks like a hot game of darts going on over there. Oh, it sure is. We have a league, and at the end of every week, the losing teams have to take the winners out to dinner. Oh, huh. Say, uh, Bob, what's going on over there? Hmm? Oh, those are the bridge fiends. They play all the time. They're waiting for a scramble. Well, then I guess they get to play a lot of bridge. Oh, they, they play enough, Homer, but believe me, when that alarm bell rings, they're out of here and into a plane downstairs like a shot. They're good boys. Good boys doing unimportant stateside work. Now, Homer, it may be stateside, but it sure isn't unimportant. Oh, by the way, you might as well meet Airman Fenimore over there. He's the man who's in constant contact with ground control intercept, you know, GCI. In case they spot an unidentified aircraft on their long-range radar, they notify him, and he notifies us. He can see just about the whole field from that glass bubble he's sitting in. Mm-hmm. Airman, I'd like you to meet my new R.O., Lieutenant Homer Cross. Lieutenant Cross, Airman Fenimore. Nice to meet you, Airman. Nice meeting you, sir. I hope you can drum us up some business. If it's one thing I hate, it's just sitting around. Oh, you'll sure be called when you need it, sir. And now, Homer, how about going downstairs and checking the plane in the hangar below us? Oh, now, there's a honey, that F-9-4. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they gave her a good name when they called her the Starfire. Well, that's as pretty as she is. Come on, we'll use this door here. Well, there she is. What a beauty. Hey, but what are the hangar doors doing open? It's cold enough out to freeze the fuel, isn't it? Well, I imagine it is, Homer, but you see, the Air Force felt that the time wasted opening the doors on an emergency scramble might be too much. You know, might just make the difference between intercept or no intercept. So they decided that the doors would have to be open at all times. What about the fuel? Well, you see this concrete floor, Homer? Yeah, I'm standing on it. Well, what you don't know that you're standing on are thousands of electric coils that keep the floor warm in winter. Now, you see, that warmth is just enough to keep the hangar over the freezing point, no matter how cold it is outside. Well, I'll be. <sighs> hey, what are you blowing on your hands for, Homer? Well, I was just thinking, Bob, it may be warm enough in here to keep the fuel from freezing, but it sure is cold enough to freeze this poor little old southern lieutenant. <laughs> how about going upstairs for a cup of java? Despite these thousands of coils... This man is cold. Uh, here it is Wednesday, 1,300 hours, and we haven't had a scramble all week. Well, we've had a couple of good games of darts. Oh, sure, sure. And I'm even learning how to play bridge. Now, seriously, Homer, in every important job, there are periods of waiting. If you were overseas, it'd be just the same. You see, by just sitting here, ready, we're doing our jobs and doing them well. well. Maybe after I've been in my first scramble, I'll feel a little different. Right now, I feel wasted. Well, you're not, believe me. Why, any minute now, that alarm bell can go off and off we'll go. You know, we're first on the line today. Well, then I'm rooting for it to go off, and soon. Hey! Scramble red, scramble well, red. Homer, you must have magic powers. Let's go, that's us. Scramble red, scramble red. Yeah, now, this is more like it. Scramble red. Here's your important job, R.O. You think you're ready for it? Man, I've been ready for days. 
Scramble red. Scramble red. Scramble red. You're listening to the proudly we hail production, A Scramble for Lancer Red. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. The Blue Yonder, a challenge today more than ever before. The best pilots, the fastest planes, the most up-to-date technical skill. How would you like the thrill of meeting the challenge of today's Blue Yonder? Well, as a pilot in the United States Air Force, you will fly some of the most famous planes in the world, the Sabrejet, the Starfire, the Thunderjet, and many others. Now, to qualify as a pilot of these renowned aircraft, to take your place among today's conquerors of the sky, you would, of course, undergo 16 months of rugged, thorough flying training. But when you graduate, you'll be a second lieutenant with the silver wings of an Air Force pilot. And you'll be earning more than $5,000 a year. Now, you are eligible to apply if you are between 19 and 26 and a half, single, and in excellent mental and physical health. And of course, you can get full information at your nearest recruiting station or your nearest United States Air Force base. Find out today how you can become an Air Force pilot. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of A Scramble for Lancer Red. Somewhere over the Atlantic is a plane, unidentified, flying towards the United States. If it's an enemy plane, what is it doing there? It is possible in these times that it carries in its body enough destruction to wipe out the city of New York. But it may be one of our planes, off course, lost, in trouble, with the radio out of commission. Lieutenants Cross and Eddy in their F-94 taxi down the runway. Cross, as radar observer, will locate the plane no matter where it is. And should it prove to be an enemy aircraft, their rockets will shoot it down. Thanks to the 58th Fighter Interceptor Squadron and others like it, the shores of our country are ringed with a defense coalition that the enemy will find hard to beat. Time for me to check with the tower, Homer. Roger. Otis 49, taxi, take off one. 49, Otis, taxi runway 23, wind southwest at 20. Otis 49, line up one. 49, Otis, clear to line up, wind southwest at 20. Radar working fine. Well, we'll be off the ground in a few seconds. I'd better check with Fenimore. 49, calling control. Lancer red, vector 080 degrees, angels 10, contact ground control intercept on channel 3. Lancer red, vector 080 degrees, angels 10, contact GCI on channel 3. Roger and out. How about a free takeoff rundown? Okay, let's run it. Roger. Belts? Check. Seat and shoulder harness fastened? Check. Shoulder harness lock? Roger. Hydraulic controls trim low boost? Check. Aileron and elevator trim tabs neutral? Check. Recheck stick trim? Roger. Flaps 32 degrees? Roger. Dive flaps up? Roger. Emergency fuel checkout? Check. Canopy closed and locked? Roger. Hell, that's it. All right, Homer. We're ready to roll. Otis, 4-9, rolling. Roger, 4-9. GCI, this is Lancer Red, airborne at 1546 hours. Lancer Red, vector 080, Angels 10. Roger, vectoring 080, going Popeye at 1200 feet, climbing to 10. Otis, this is 49, leaving your frequency one and one half hours. Roger, 49. Well, RO, it's your turn now. Let's get to that unidentified plane and fast. Bob, my boy, I'm beginning to see what you mean by how important this job is. For all we know, that plane out there has a bomb on it that could kill a couple of million people. You keep flying this, baby, and I'll find that plane. How are you coming with that, 
radar, Homer. Just fine. We should be making contact any second now. Uh, you know, every time I go up in this star fire, I realize all over again what a honey of a plane she is. Bob, I have a contact at 30 degrees port. Lancer Red, we have a Judy. Vector 30 degrees port. Roger, Homer. Keep her on the beam and we should overtake that plane pretty soon. Can't be soon enough. We've got to intercept it before it reaches the coast. And then pour it on. According to my radar screen, there's one unidentified aircraft dead ahead. Well, if he's an enemy, he'd better watch out. Lancer Red is on his tail. I see up ahead? Homer, my boy, that's our baby. Sure is a big plane. Can you tell if it's one of ours? Well, I can barely make it out with all these clouds and snow. Just our luck, it had to start to snow. Just have to get in closer, that's all. Rockets ready for firing? <laughs> they sure are. We might as well go on in. Your eyes wide open, Homer. Man, I am. It looks like a C-54. She's certainly not trying to get away from us. All right. Can you see the numbers on the wing? No, not quite. Let's try to get a little closer, huh? Roger. I can see the numbers now, Bob. Eight, two, four, seven. How about you? Can you read them now? Roger. Eight, two, four, seven. All right, now for a call to GCI. Roger. GCI, this is Lancer Red. Judy is a C-54, Air Force number eight, two, four, seven. I say again, eight, two, four, seven. Lancer Red, maintain contact until further notice. Roger. This wind and snow sure is getting bad. Yeah, unless that's an enemy plane with U.S. markings, we should be winging home pretty soon. Lancer Red, this is GCI. Break it off. Pigeon 305 degrees at 50 miles. Roger and out. Well, Homer, we're on our way home. Oh, what a relief. I mean, that, that wasn't an enemy plane. You're not just talking. Although I will say this, Bob... If it had been an enemy, it sure would never have gotten through to the coast. Not with GCI and the 58th working together to keep our country safe. home. How do you feel after your first mission? I guess I feel kind of proud. Proud? How do you mean? I know I said a lot of things the first day I met you about how I wanted to go overseas because I wanted to do something important. And that I didn't think the 58th was doing an important enough job because it was a stateside outfit. I know you did. You got me a little mad, too. Well, what I mean by proud is... I realize that I've been assigned to one of the most important jobs that a man can have. Well, I'm glad you can see that now. Take that plane that we went after a few hours ago. It turned out to be an Air Force plane that had been blown off course by that storm we ran into. You know, you once said that if it turned out to be one of our planes, the mission was a dud. I said a lot of things before I got education. You know, you said something the other day that I didn't understand. I do now, though. What was that? When I said that all the missions so far had been duds, you answered, fortunately. I can see now what you meant. Well, you see, Homer, the first one that isn't a dud almost means we're at war. Even though we stopped that one, it would mean that there would be others, hundreds, maybe thousands of them. And nobody looks forward to that day. I should say not. Not even if it meant that I did the most important job in the whole wide world. And yet, you see, we have to be ready. We have to be alert. We have to be prepared. The stronger we are, the less chance there is of war. Roger. 
Hey, Bob, what time is it? Well, a little after 1,800 hours. Man, oh, man, this is one southern chicken that's about to get fried. Oh, who's going to do that? A very nice young lady named Nancy Waters. I have a date with her in less than an hour. By the time I get back to my quarters, shower, shave, and all, I'm going to be late. Oh, I think she'll forgive you when she hears that you've practically been a hero. <laughs> hey, quit your kidding. No, seriously, Homer, she's a pretty square shooter. If she hears you were delayed by a mission, I know she'll understand. Hey, you like her pretty much, don't you? <laughs> I sure do. You know, I'm not the type for a girl in every port. I like to go out on dates and all that. I always have. And I went out a lot when I was at Moody. But this Nancy, boy, she's something kind of special. Hey, you mean you're in love already after only a week? Well, I'm not exactly in love yet, understand, but... <laughs> well, I feel pretty much about her the same way I feel about the 58th. And how's that? As I said before, man, proud. Just plain proud. <laughs> There's no thrill in the world like that of flying a jet, cleaving through the sky at the speed of sound, pushing out against the limits of space, blazing the way to a new air future. Yes, indeed, it's an exciting life, one that offers unlimited opportunities to young men of ambition and vision. If you are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, single and a high school graduate, a wonderful future in jet aviation is open to you. Become an Air Force aviation cadet. You'll be flying jets easily and safely within 18 months. Now, I must admit that aviation cadet training is rough and rigorous, but the rewards are certainly well worth it. You will graduate as an Air Force lieutenant. You will earn more than $5,000 a year and, of course, have a promising career ahead of you. You'll be a man fully equipped for positions of responsibility in the fields of military and commercial aviation. Guarantee your future as an aviation cadet. See your nearest recruiting officer today or go out to your nearest United States Air Force base and find out how you can become an aviation cadet. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>